Jane Carter is in, in the studio with us, labor economist with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME. A-F-S-C-M-E dot org is the website. Hey, Jane, great to have you back. Thanks for having me back. And and uh, welcome back from Thanksgiving and hinterlands and all kinds of things. <laughs> yes. So um, uh, starting Wednesday, December 3rd through Friday, December 5th, this from uh, an AFSCME uh, press release, I guess, hundreds of state lawmakers will be in Washington, D.C. Through a, for a three-day conference hosted by ALEC. Yes, the American Legislative Exchange Council is in town in Washington, D.C. today for oh. uh, for fantastic their annual convention i wondered why the skies were darker <laughs> and as i was walking in i was hearing shark music you know it's yeah it's i'm um, so the american legislative exchange council is a 40 year old um institution that does model bills in our state legislatures across the country right. including voter id stand your ground right to work pension reform and um and the, de- the degradation of our environment yeah <laughs> wonderful people. just complete and total destruction of the middle class right so so what are they what are they doing here in town? So every year they have an annual convention here in DC. Mm-hmm. And interesting enough, um, we can expect to see the model legislation come out right before sessions start in our state houses across the country. But we actually just got some new numbers today. Um, previously, before the election, Alec had approximately nine hundred and fifty members. Um, they reelected six hundred and ninety eight of them, or almost seven hundred. And only 234 are leaving. With are these legislator members or legis- corporate members? Legislative members. And okay. so, um, and we expect to see hundreds new, hundreds of new legislative members coming in to D.C. So basically, ALEC time. has been unaffected by all of the exposés and things. Yeah, you know, and it, we were actually talking as a, as a coalition this morning. 99 companies have left ALEC since 2011, since ALEC Exposed first launched. 99 companies. Um, out of those 99 companies who have left... Ten of them are in the, t- uh, the top 20 most profitable co- country, uh, companies in the world. Um, Seven trillion dollar in profit caps. And uh, but Alec is still thriving. Hmm. Hmm. And wow, that's extraordinary. So for people who don't, I, I, this is a story that's really worth like laying out and explaining. For people who don't understand how Alec works, can you just describe the process of what's going to be going on in this town over the next four days in these meetings? So Alec it divides up into nine task forces that are very similar to what you have at your state house. So you have a labor and um, um, and commerce committee or task force. You have an education task force. They have a tax task force. They have a civil justice task force. All of the names of the task force sound just like your legislative committees. In those task forces, you have uh, elected officials who sit on one side of the room and corporate leaders and members, CEOs, uh, Wall Street bankers who sit on the other side. And they come up with model legislation. And then state legislators go back to their home states and, and and propose these bills in your state houses, and they typically become law. Wow. And and legislators and lobbyists are sitting side by side throughout this. And process. it's really important to note that the public is not allowed in. In fact, the Guardian was rejected from the from their proceedings yesterday and their board their board meeting yesterday. They were rejected credentials for the entire uh, conference last year. Dana Milbrick was was rejected, so they don't they don't even allow press in. They uh, we've tried to get in um, as as members of the public with our elected officials in there making legislation. I'd like to know what's going on. Um, not allowed in unless you pay the 50 bucks to become a member or, and then also the price of the conference fee. And for, for corporations, they pay between 10000 just to be members and about in between fifty dollars to $75,000 to become a member of the task force. So it's, um, it's a pay-to-play operation behind closed doors where corporations literally write the bills to get a piece of the pie that's left out there in, in our state houses. This is so wrong. It's absolutely wrong. It's it's corporate takeover of our of our elected officials, and these elected officials get elected on a really great platform of transparency, accountability. I mean, and we all know both the Republicans and the Democrats promote good government of some sort. But then when you go behind closed doors, where the public is eliminated from the process, where the people who got you into office are not allowed in those doors, but only the people who can cough up 50 grand are, there's something wrong with that legislation that's coming out of it. And I think it's also important to note that ALEC is listed as a 501c3. In layman terms, that means they're considered a charitable organization. So you, they don't have to declare that they're lobbying because they're saying they're not. They don't call this lobbying whatsoever. And so all of this is off the books of ethics reports. Legislators don't have to report it. They don't have to report the trip here. They don't have to report who they're talking to, the steak dinners they're having, the scotch they're drinking, and the, and the, and the, the family trip that they're basically getting for free. And, and, and on top of that, as a 501c3, if any corporation wants to throw money into ALEC and say, hey, would you pass this law so that we can make an extra billion dollars? Here's a, here's a million. 
It's tax deductible. It is. It's totally taxed. So you on and top I are of that, for it. we are we are totally paying for that as well. Right. This is this is like evil genius. I right. Mean, this and, is like- and to get, and to get, make it worse, you know, corporate welfare in this country. There was a recent report that came out. On average, it cost state and local governments seventy billion dollars. Corporate well, welfare, so your tax loopholes that you get. So on top of this, you're getting ALEC membership for free. Um, South Dakota and Iowa pay for their legislators to be members. Corporations get this as a write-off, costing our state and local taxpayers $70 billion. On average, it's about $1,100 per uh, a, a year for a family of four. Wow. So uh, ask me. You're a union that represents... Middle-class, blue-collar workers you know, across this country. Yeah, yes. uh, you know, from from uh, police officers to... To, to janitors, yeah, to custodians, to everything. bus drivers. Yeah. yeah, everybody. And and unions have been in the crosshairs of the right wing for a long, long, long time. And I'm guessing you, you mentioned kind of in passing this long list, and you said right to work is one of the... Right to work for less legislation. Right. Um, did you guys start the Alec Exposed website? No, our good friends at the Center for Media and Democracy did. We are part of the Alec, a stand up to Alec coalition. However, uh-huh. it's a loose knit co- a coalition of a lot of organizations, um, both labor unions, uh, citizen action groups. Uh, there's even um, sometimes we have the uh, nunnery in, in Wisconsin sign off on some of our petitions. Well, it's a large, loosely kind of loose knit coalition that's opposed to um, kind of selling off our, our democracy and standing up for the middle class. Interesting enough, though, right to work. Um, we're watching 11 states this year. It's one of Alec's main priorities in their new initiative, the the American um, the Center for I'm sorry, the American City County Exchange that they launched this year, hoping to push right to work on a local level. But today, Wisconsin, we had right to work filed by an Alec member. Really? Yes. In the state legislature. In the state legislature in Wisconsin. I thought I thought that Scott Walker had already done something like that. <laughs> so Act Ten passed, but this would be total and complete right right oh, so that, for, that just for public and to... private sector. Act Ten only applied to the public sector. Uh, okay. So it's it's all our war on unions. Basically. It is, and Missouri filed yesterday another bill that's very similar to Alex's model bill for municipal elections. They filed a, a multiple a multitude of bills in, in Missouri yesterday. Is there any? Uh, I mean, we. We have some familiarity with this. Mark Pocan was in a Alec meeting, getting mm-hmm. dragged out of the cigar bar on live on the air with right. us. You know, uh, what a year ago I think it was, and and we've been sort of following this. But I haven't a the, I don't know of any Democratic analog to this or or liberal or progressive analog to it, and B I don't know how to stop this. I think stopping it is it's you know it's corporate it's corporate welfare and takeover of our democracy. I think the only way to stop it is when our citizens stand up and say no more. When they actually call out and find out who their legislators are who are attending these events and asking them not to take the corporate money. Um, I think that it's it's you know I'm I don't I don't think that that Alec I'm not opposed to ha- having smart people write bills. What I'm opposed to is when companies spend fifty thousand dollars to write a bill that is anti middle class that takes away workers' rights that takes away the future our environment for our grandchildren that 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 privatizes education that um, eliminates pensions in this country when they when they write bills and they actually get away with it and the taxpayers are the ones who pay for it. I have a problem with that, and I right. think our every I think our neighbors would too. Well, and and I think it even goes beyond that because they're they're spending fifty thousand dollars to write a bill, not because they believe in conservative principles or they have some kind of ideological bot. They're doing there's they're they're arguably you could say the executives in these companies are doing what they have to do. They're spending fifty thousand dollars to make ten million because that's how much money additional profit they'll make if the minimum wage doesn't go up right. and for example or whatever it may be or if this you know if Walmart doesn't get unionized and arguably I mean going back to Dodge v Ford or something like that you know arguably there's a legal requirement or at least a you know the the corporate sociopathy requirement of maximize profit at all expenses Right. And, and I mean, it's, it's, yeah. So I, I've, I've, I've gone through the numbers before in your show. Um, and I'm not sure about the radio show. So I think maybe your, your listeners might find this interesting. In the United States, our infrastructure, our roads and our bridges, our private waste, um, our, our wastewater treatment plants are worth about a hundred billion dollars. Okay. Um, private, just, just sanitation alone is, is a multi-billion dollar a year business. Mm-hmm. Um, schools, our, our, our K through 12 education system in this country is 9% GDP. 
Overall, Wall Street kind of put a price on public service and assets and valued what our AFSCME members do, what taxpayers own, at, a, at, a, at $6 trillion, worth $6 trillion. So when you have a company that wants a piece of that pie, paying fifty grand is nothing to get a whack at $6 trillion. Yeah. Does that include the $2.5 trillion in the Social Security Trust Fund? No, that is not. That is just your roads, bridges, and the people who work tirelessly to make sure you have clean water and your kids have a good school. Wow. So the more they can privatize, the more money they make, and this is the imperative. This is why I keep saying, you know, capitalism in and of itself isn't evil, but unregulated capitalism is sociopathic. It, it, it is it's like cancer. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think that that's, I think there's a need for regulations. I think there's absolutely a need for, to making sure that we have clean drinking water. I think there should be a check on companies that have, um, that, you know, can go in behind closed doors and write bills. I think we want to make sure our roads and bridges are up to par. I don't think we want private prisons in this country. I think we want to have a good, swift judicial system. And I don't think it should have a price tag on it where someone can bid on it at the low, low price of $50,000. Right. Which takes us back to the fact that only eight states now, maybe nine, require a civics course to graduate high school. Uh, uh, America is profoundly unaware of the difference between public and private assets. Right. And people get lost when you even talk about it, which is just a real tragedy. Jane Carter, you're doing great work. Thanks Thank so, much so much for being Thanks with us. Thanks for having me. Ask me, AFSCME.org is the website. And we'll be right